couples claim to want to give a hearing to other views, but then are shocked and offended to discover that there are other views. William F. Buckley Jr. Liberals claim to want to give a hearing to other views. God damn it. <laughs> Welcome to a special live edition of Paddling the Douche Canoe. With House and Mo. Because we're a bunch of fuckers. I... I just wanted to play Minecraft. That was my only goal today. I just wanted to play Minecraft. No, you can't do that. And I wake up, and the world's going to shit. What the fuck? For those of you who are unaware, and I have no fucking idea how you would be unaware... The worst shooting or the worst mass shooting in U.S. history has occurred like now. Well, early this morning. It's sad. I actually have the CNN article on it so I don't mess up any information or anything. Because unlike a lot of people on the Internet, we do not want to sensationalize this stuff. Yeah, we don't want anybody to draw wrong conclusions or anything. We just want to give you the facts, and then we'll give you our opinion after the facts. So go ahead and give them the facts, and then we will give our opinion on to how we think this is. <clears throat> All right. Orlando shooting. 50 killed. Shooter pledged ISIS allegiance. An American-born man who'd pledged allegiance to ISIS gunned down 50 people early Sunday at a gay nightclub in Orlando, the deadliest mass shooting in the United States, and the nation's worst terror attack since 9-11, authorities have sa stated. The gunman, Omar Mateen, 29, of Fort Pierce, Florida, was interviewed by the FBI in 2013 and 2014, but was not found to be a threat, the FBI said. Mateen called 911 during the attack to pledge allegiance to ISIS and mentioned the Boston Marathon bombing bombers, according to a U.S. official. Orlando police shot and killed Mateen. Mateen's ex-wife said she thought he was mentally ill. Mateen carried a rifle and pistol into the packed Pulse Club about 2 a.m. Sunday and started shooting, killing 50 people and wounding at least 53, police said. After a standoff of about three hours, while people trapped inside the club desperately called out and messaged friends and relatives, police crashed into the building with an armored vehicle and stun grenades and killed Mateen. It appears he was organized and well-prepared, Orlando Police Chief John Mina said early Sunday. Authorities said they haven't found any accomplices. There has been no claim of responsibility for the attack on jihadi forums. Not true, actually. Um, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. Yeah, but that's happened since that article was written and released. But ISIS sympathizers have reacted by praising the attack on pro-Islamic state forums. We know enough to say this was an act of terror and an act of hate, President Obama said in an address to the nation from the White House. While the violence could have hit any American community, this is an especially heartbreaking day for our friends who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, he said. Omar Mir Sadiq Mateen was born in 1986 in New York. Most recently, he lived in Fort Pierce, about 120 miles southeast of Orlando. Fearing explosives, police evacuated about 200 people from the apartment complex where he lived while they looked through his residence for evidence. Mateen's parents, who are from Afghanistan, said he'd expressed outrage after seeing two men kiss in Miami, but they didn't consider him particularly religious and didn't know of his connection to ISIS. He was married in 2009 to a woman originally from Uzbekistan, according to the marriage license, but he filed documents to end the marriage in 2011. Satora Yusufi, interviewed by CNN in Boulder, Colorado, said, she, damn, she got the hell away from him. Do you blame her? Said she and Mateen were together for about four months, though it took a long time to complete the divorce because they lived in different parts of the country after separating. Mateen was a normal husband at the beginning of their marriage, but started abusing her after a few months, she said. She said Mateen was bipolar, although he was not formally diagnosed. 
She also said Mateen had a history with steroids. He was religious, but she said she didn't think his religion played into the attack. Mateen has worked since 2007 as a security officer at G4S Secure Solutions, one of the world's largest private security firms. A message posted in Arabic on a dark website associated with the ISIS news agency Amak said the armed attack that targeted a gay nightclub in the city of Orlando in the American state of Florida and that bore more than a hundred killed and wounded was carried out by an Islamic State fighter. But CNN's Salma Abdelaziz, who translated the message and closely monitors ISIS messaging, cautioned about taking the message at face value. She said the language is inconsistent with previous ISIS announcements and that the Arabic word for gay was used rather than an epithet normally used by ISIS. Also, there was no claim that the attack was directed, just an after-the-fact claim that the gunman was an ISIS fighter, she said. At a Sunday afternoon news briefing, FBI Assistant Special Agent Ronald Hopper said the agency was aware of Mateen. The FBI interviewed him in 2013 and 14 after he expressed sympathy for a suicide bomber, Hopper said. The, those interviews turned out to be inconclusive, so there was nothing to keep the investigation going, Hopper said. Mateen was not under investigation at the time of Sunday's shooting and was not under surveillance, Hopper said as well. In the past two weeks, Mateen legally purchased a Glock pistol and a long gun, ATF Assistant Special Agent in Charge Trevor Velenor told reporters. It is not known if those weapons were used in the attack. He is not a prohibited person. They can legally walk into a gun dealership and acquire and purchase firearms. He did so, and he did so within the last week or so, Villanor said. Pulse describes itself as, quote, the hottest gay bar, unquote, in the heart of Orlando. Hours before the shooting, the club urged partygoers to attend its Latin Flavor event Sunday night. The club is a vast open space that was hosting more than 300 patrons late Saturday and into Sunday morning. People inside the cavernous nightclub described a scene of panic made more confusing by the loud music and darkness. At first, it sounded like it was part of the show because there was an event going on and we were all having a good time, clubgoer Andy Moss said. But once people started screaming and shots just kept ringing out, you know that's not a show anymore. Christopher Hansen said he was getting a drink at the bar about 2 a.m. Wait, wait. Chris Hansen? Chris Hansen. That explains some stuff. Anyway, continue. He, when he just saw bodies going down, he heard gunshots just one after another after another. The gunshots went on for so long that the shooting could have lasted a whole song, he said. When the shots erupted, Hansen hit the ground, crawling on his elbows and knees before spotting a man who had been shot. I took my bandana off and shoved it in the hole in his back, Hansen said, adding that he saw another woman who appeared to be shot in the arm. Survivors pro- provided CNN with dramatic accounts of how they avoided death. One person hiding in the bathroom covered herself with bodies to protect herself. Some entertainers hid in a dressing room when, when the shooting started and escaped the building by crawling out when police removed the air conditioning unit. One of the bartenders said she hid under the glass bar. Police came in and said, if you are alive, raise your hand. Then police got her and others out. After the initial shooting, police surrounded the club while Mateen was inside with club goers hiding in bathrooms and other parts of the building. People inside the club were communicating on their phones with law enforcement from that time until about 5 a.m. when authorities used an armored vehicle to break down the door of the building. 39 people and Mateen were pronounced dead at the scene with two bodies found in the parking lot, Mayor Buddy Dyer said. 11 people were taken to hospitals and pronounced dead there, he said. The city of Orlando is posting names of the deceased on a website after the next of kin are notified. The youngest person among the first seven named, Luis Omar Ocasio Capo, was 20 years old. 43 of the wounded people were patients on Sunday afternoon at Orlando Regional Medical Center, a hotel spokesperson said, with 26 operations being performed. Before Sunday, the deadliest shooting in shootings in U.S. history were the Virginia Tech in 2007 and Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012, with 32 and 27 killed respectively. 14 people were killed December 2nd in an attack in San Bernardino, California. 
Well, yeah, but 21 people were killed in 1991 in Killeen, Texas. But Okay, but apparently that doesn't count. National media attention was already focused on Orlando over the weekend because of Friday night's fatal shooting of Christina Grimmie while she signed autographs after a show. She was an up-and-coming singer who had appeared on NBC's The Voice. Her shooter then killed himself. The Pulse shooting happened only a few miles from the Plaza Live Theater where Grimmie was killed. Dyer, the mayor, called for the city to come together. We need to support each other. We need to love each other. And we will not be defined by a hateful shooter, he said. <clears throat> President Obama called for flags to be lowered to half staff, and Florida Governor Rick Scott called a moment of silence across the nation at 6 p.m. Sunday. States of emergency were declared for the city of Orlando and for Orange County. Also on Sunday, oh, this is getting into something else, and we'll get into that later. But yeah, that was the article. Yeah. I kind of don't know where to start. A oh, terrible event. I mean, when you think about what horrific groups or what happens to horrific groups in this country, yeah, I really don't think that, like, what did the gays do, really? They, they, they took our jobs? No, they didn't even take our jobs. They just want to make the world fabulous. I'm sorry. I'm going to hell for that joke. In my experience with the many gay people I have hung around, most gays don't fucking care. They're not trying to make the world gay. They just want their little part of it to be gay. I'm going to steal a joke from a much better comedian. Okay. Uh, if I remembered who it was, I would credit him, but I don't. But <clears throat> he says that gay men are the happiest people on earth. Because when you ask them if they're gay, it's not like yes or not like yeah. They're like, hey! <laughs> I mean, they're, they're so shooting into a group of people in a nightclub is horrible, but it <sighs> part of me, part of me is bracing for the fallout to that. They're always going to go with. And that is the fact that the guns caused this. Oh, that's already happened. I'm um, trending on Twitter. The um, earlier in the afternoon was hashtag stop gun violence. Yes, I agree with that. Stop gun violence. Don't take away guns. Stop gun violence. And you, you know, oh, really, that article didn't mention that Obama was talking about um, what he said was no decision on guns is a decision. How about, and and this is just, you know, it's just me spitballing here, but uh, how about we start cracking down on people who like to shoot up other people. I mean, if the FBI has already invest already interviewed this guy twice, maybe a little ping should have been sent to the FBI when he tried to buy a gun. Exactly. Um, I've been, I, I used to have a job where I would sell guns. I worked in a sporting goods department. And we did background checks, and if the background check did not come back saying that uh, this guy could not have the gun, we gave it to him. Does that make me responsible for any gun, any shooting that that guy did because the background check came back clean? No. Um, you did your due diligence. You ran a background check on him. Seriously, if this guy has been interviewed by the FBI twice, I think, because there's something that they can do where they can tell you to hold the gun for, for uh, 14 days while they make a decision. If he bought a gun that recently, there should have at least been a 14-day hold put on that weapon if he's been interviewed by the FBI twice. Just saying. So I... Uh, I personally don't think that it's about uh, that what needs to happen is um, 
there needs to be tougher gun legislation. I just think that the legislation that we currently have needs to be enforced. Yeah. Also, the government needs to stop giving people illegal firearms to see what happens with them. You you're not referring to the or you're not referring to the Fast and the Furious thing, are you? I am in fact. I mean because who to th- giving gun brokers guns to sell to criminals would blow up in their faces. I know, right? Who has seen that shit coming? I, I couldn't have imagined what the hell. I mean, it's, it's like when you give criminals guns, they're going to use them. But yeah, right, right at when I heard this happen, I was on Twitter, and immediately there was people pushing their agendas. And it wasn't just ban all guns and stuff. Some of the things I saw was um, shootings like this happen because America enforces discriminatory LGBTQ laws. Since maybe at one point, but not in the past decade. Well, there's the bathroom law. But that's a state law. Yeah, that's in North Carolina. Yeah. Um, And there, I mean, there are some other states that are trying to enact legislation like that but it's it's ridiculous okay people saying that if you're trans you can't use a bathroom does not lead to people who praise isis and dedicate themselves to them killing 50 people there's there's no connection there no those laws are just because guys don't want or people don't want Dudes in the bathroom with their daughters. That's all that boils down to. That person might be a woman and have a penis. That makes me uncomfortable. Serious. That that's all it boils down to is dudes don't want dudes in the bathroom with their daughters. My thought process on this is for that whole thing is just unisex bathrooms. <laughs> I prefer to make them go shit in the yard. <laughs> go shit in the yard. God, that reminds me. Every fucking time somebody comes up to me, do you have a bathroom? No, we shit in the yard. Yes, there's a bathroom in this home. Have you ever been in a home in this country that did not have a bathroom that was newer than built in 1930? I, Jesus, uh, tap dancing, Teddy fucking Christ, people. All I'm going to say on the on the gendered bathroom issue is if they're seriously dedicated to being trans, you're not going to be able to tell. Well, I mean, not everybody has the benefit of really being able to pass really well. I'm like, just saying. I, I, I know personally a transgendered person who's um, six foot four and rather burly. And even though they try, and they do try, there's they're not going to be able to pass. It's just the nature of the beast. Maybe I'm I'm just weird, but I had an aunt that was six foot three, and she was born female. So I see a six foot tall woman, and all I'm thinking is like, are we related? Well, no, no, I'm not saying it's. I'm I'm just saying this person has very masculine features, but. I don't I don't want gay people to get shot for being gay. And there only seems to be one group that wants to shoot people for being gay. Yeah. I mean, uh, another person I ran into who was like, oh, there are Christians who preach hate against homosexuals too. Yeah, but when's the last time a Christian shot up a gay bar? I don't think that's happened since like the 60s. Um, what, uh, what religion was the, the guy who went to the church in Charleston a while back? Dylan Roof? Yeah. Uh, I think he was an atheist. But, but he was like a, uh, he was a white nationalist. I was about to say that could be more about white supremacy than, than anything else. Yeah, because he, he like, he supported the, he had the Rhodesia flag and supported apartheid and stuff. He That dude had a whole bunch of political bullshit going on in his head. 
But it, I mean, it's just. Ellen Roof's religion. I'm getting I'm getting more and more tired of people doing shitty stuff in the name of ideology. Oh, apparently Dylan Roof was a member of a, a Lutheran church. Well, he was on the roll for the Lutheran church, which doesn't really mean a lot because, hell, I'm on the roll for a Lutheran church somewhere. Like I said, I'm just getting tired of people doing shitty stuff in the name of ideology. Uh, yeah, it does kind of seem like it, it, zealotry is poison. If you dedicate yourself to an ideal, you're eventually go. If you dedicate yourself too much to an ideal, you're eventually going to get to the point where your ideal wants you to go kill children, or gays, or orphan kids, or kittens, or orphaning kittens. The people who orphan kittens, they're the real monsters. Yeah. But it's just, uh, it's terrible, you know, because people are standing there and they're going, well, these gays, they're, they're butt-fucking each other and enjoying it. How goddamn dare they? Or again, in this case, Allah damn them. Again, it comes back to my whole couch philosophy of life. Are they breaking down my couch? Are they doing it on my couch? I don't give a shit. Are they doing it within the general five foot area of my couch? No, I don't give a shit. It's like the people get got pissed because gay marriage got legalized. You know, this mean this doesn't mean that they're going to make you get gay married, right? It's, it's kind of like my philosophy on spiders. What's that? Um, I have a live and let live policy with spiders until they invade the sovereign area that is my bed. Once they in, invade House Bedistan, fucker's gonna die. <laughs> okay, anywhere else in the world, we're golden. Oh, but people have been um, up until the information really got public for this shooter. There was so much misinformation being spread about. It was hilarious. I saw doctored screenshots where it was like his Instagram profile, but it was completely faked. And it said he lived in, he, he was from Islamabad, Pakistan. And um, I saw another one that said he was like a, of Iraqi parents and stuff. And I was saying, no, no, this is bullshit. He, he had, uh, he walked in there with military grade weapons. No, no. The only, uh, the only thing I've seen about this guy recently that, that stuck out in my head was the, uh, the picture that they keep bringing up for him where it looks like he's got really, really bad hair plugs. <laughs> Yeah, he was going prematurely bald. But that could be a symptom of the steroid abuse. I don't uh I don't jump on the news in the first hour of anything like this anymore because everything is wrong. Yeah, cuz instead of actually doing research on things, news agencies just watch other news agencies. So if anybody reports anything incorrect, they all fucking leap on it. That's why this impromptu live stream is happening at 10 o'clock central time rather than earlier in the day so that we could actually have, you know, legitimate facts because Mo and I are quickly becoming the only legitimate news source on the internet, which That's frightens right. me every fucking day <laughs> because we're willing to actually hit multiple sources, cross check things, figure things out look at things and go, but this is completely fucking bullshit. We're not going to bring that up unless mentioning that it's complete fucking bullshit. As people immediately try to fear monger. I, I just don't think that fair and balanced news should come along with dick jokes. <laughs> well, like I keep telling you, man, we are the most legitimate news source on the internet. Yeah, and that frightens me. We should be interviewed by Alex Jones. But I don't want his water filters. Well, listen, you need to understand. 
the ancient aliens came down and they created the Muslim religion for the express purpose of destroying Christianity across the world. Buy my water filters. That's why you need to buy my water filters. They have been blessed by Christian priests to drive off the alien lizardmen Muslims. Um, there's just one problem with that. What's that? If I ever get in the same room with Alex Jones, the first thing I'm going to do is punch him in his face. He does need punched. I mean, every time I see him, all I can think is that, wow, that is the, one of the most punchable faces I've ever seen in the world. I wouldn't even realize I'm doing it. I'd be like, so, Mo, what's going on? In the meanwhile, I'm punching him in the face. Like, why are you punching Alex Jones in the face? I, oh, oh, sorry, Mr. Jones. I can't seem to stop myself. There's a great video on YouTube. I encourage every human alive to look it up. It's called Alex Jones Goes Super Saiyan. And it's where he's like, devil be God. Ah! And somebody added in a whole bunch of like Dragon Ball Z effects with wind and lightning and stuff. And at the end of it, he goes Super Saiyan. It's amazing. Okay, Mo. We've got more stuff that we wanted to talk about. We do. Um... So the same day as this shooting happened, you know, worst mass shooting in U.S. history, something happened in California. Okay. I've got an article here from the L.A. Times. Man with weapons and explosives arrested was going to the L.A. Gay Pride Parade, police say. Because for some reason, the gays are just the targets this week. Authorities in San Monica found possible explosives as well as weapons and ammunition Sunday in the car of a man who told them he was in town for the L.A. Pride Festival in West Hollywood, a law enforcement source said. Early Sunday, Santa Monica police received a call of a suspected prowler near Olympic Boulevard and 11th Street. Patrol officers responded and encountered an individual who told officers he was waiting for a friend. This led officers to inspect the car and find several weapons and a lot of ammunition, as well as tannerite, an ingredient that can be used to create a pipe bomb. The yeah, car, but how many how many chemicals can't be used to make a pipe bomb at this point? True. You can seriously make a bomb out of white flour. But here's where it gets like a bit sketchier. The car had Indiana plates. Well, that was a road trip and a half. The man who was arrested made comments that he was in town for the Pride event in West Hollywood this weekend, you know, with the guns and the ammo. Wait, so he took guns across state borders? Because California's gun laws are not pleasant. Nope. The source said they believe there was no connection between the gay nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida, and the Santa Monica incident. The investigation has been taken over by the FBI, the source said. Authorities said the arrest occurred at 5 a.m. The suspect told authorities he was looking for a friend at the festival, said acting L.A. County Under Sheriff Neil Tyler. The suspect is being questioned, and authorities are trying to find the person he said he was looking for, he said. That was a great statement there. Excellent writing. You, you can only quote what you're given, dude. <laughs> Santa Monica police spokesman Saul Rodriguez confirmed that the suspect was from Indiana and that the weapons were found in the car, but added the police were not aware of what the suspect's intentions were at this point. No, I'm just going to Pride to sell these guns. Turns out he was just trying to hashtag arm all gays. It would make things a lot easier. Neighbors called police after he was spotted knocking on doors and loitering in the area, Rodriguez said. Okay, that's starting to get more sketchy. Santa Monica police were searching the suspect's white Acura on Sunday morning near the intersection of 11th Street and Michigan Street when the arrest was made. All four of the car's doors were open, and a drab green blanket, red gasoline canister, and several other smaller items were being piled on the sidewalk next to it. A city official in West Hollywood also confirmed the arrest and stressed that officials were beefing up security at the gay pride event. They found him with weapons that were very disconcerting, said the source, adding officials are taking the appropriate safety precautions. The parade comes hours after the attack on the Orlando Club that killed 50 people. At least 53 were injured in the deadliest shooting in modern American history after gunmen took hostages. 
One source in West Hollywood said the discussion of calling off the parade, but uh, that officials decided to go forward with heavy security, including undercover officers in the crowd. The sources spoke to the Times on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to comment publicly. West Hollywood Councilwoman Lindsay Horvath said in a statement that Los Angeles County Sheriff's officials are stepping up security efforts around Sunday's parade and other festivities, but she said officials do not believe there's any threat around Sunday's activities. We are hearing absolutely devastating news reports from Orlando this morning, she said. Gun violence on the LGBT family during Pride Month makes me sick. The deadliest mass shooting in America happened to LGBT people on Latin night. While we mourn this heartbreaking loss, we must also rededicate ourselves for, to the fight for full equality for all people. No one is equal unless everyone is equal. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Um, they had equality. Like, they were openly celebrating their sexuality at a club. Some nut job who was attached to a fucking Bronze Age methodology on life decided he was going to go get a gun and fuck up their equality. I said it before. I'll say it again. But if you're going to live your life by Bronze Age thinking, you should only be allowed Bronze Age weapons. Oh, and Will Wheaton tweeted out something. <clears throat> okay, I'm preparing my standard Will Wheaton response. <clears throat> Shout out to pro-gun Republicans who took a break from passing anti-LGBT laws to offer thoughts and prayers to LGBT victims of gun violence. Um, are you prepared for my standard Will Wheaton response? Do it. Fuck you, Will Reaton. Fuck you in the ass. I could tell you what I tweeted him to get blocked by him. Shut up, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. You're right, because even people... Okay, that's the thing. The anti-LGBT people in this country, especially the ones in positions of authority, tend to be people who have grown up in our society that teaches that killing other people is wrong. So yes, pro-gun, anti-LGBT American senators can sit there and give out thoughts and prayers and condolences for the victims of this massacre because they believe that killing someone, regardless of whether or not they like to take it in the ass, is wrong. There's that whole belief, you know, in the in the fact that he, or, or of the sacred nature of human life. You know, every life is sacred. Every sperm is sacred. <laughs> that maybe, you know, the problem is violence. And, I don't know. I just, it, it irks me. It's irksome. But yeah, Will Wheaton is a pathetic piece of shit. Who has sucked SJW cock for so long that his breath smells like AIDS Skrillex? I I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, um, Donald Trump. This is interesting. Donald Trump did a tweet like shortly after the attack happened that said horrible mass shooting, um, possible connection to terrorism, investigation pending, pretty much, right? Right. So he's not expressing an opinion in this tweet. News website The Hill wrote a complete article based on his one tweet. Okay. Yeah. And this was before he started tweeting about the shooting. It was just, hey, um, this is happening. And fucking people are the hill who is rabidly anti-Trump from what I have seen. It just wrote up the whole fucking article on it. It was crazy. Let's see. 
shall we see what the um both of the candidates have said about this event on Twitter? Sure. Hillary Clinton, who is not as active on Twitter as um, Donald Trump. Trump is, tweeted, Desperte con las devastadora noticia de flor. The first thing she tweeted, and then she had it translated into Spanish. Woke up to hear the devastating news from Florida. As we wait for more information, my thoughts are with those affected by this horrific act. Then she said, I join Americans in praying for the victims in the attack of Orlando. This was an act of terror. Or this was also an act of hate. To the LGBT community, please know that you have millions of allies across our country. I am one of them. We need to keep guns like the ones used last night out of the hands of terrorists or other violent criminals. And uh, let's see. This is the time to stand together and resolve to do everything we can to defend our communities and our country which is much more war hawkish than I was expecting from Hillary Clinton. And she released an official statement, but that's pretty much all she said. Shall we check the burn? Sure. Okay. Bernie is even less active on social media than she is. So his tweets, he retweeted, um, he retweeted NBC News PR quoting him. So he retweeted, it's horrific, it's unthinkable, says Bernie Sanders on Orlando shooting this morning on Meet the Press. So that's what he was doing that morning. He was on Meet the Press. And he tweeted an hour ago, from what is now known, this is, was a terrorist attack by an ISIS sympathizer. That despicable and barbaric organization must be destroyed. I'll agree with that. That was not something I was expecting Bernie Sanders to tweet. Well, to be fair, it's kind of hard to be, you know, moderate when it comes to, uh, when it comes to people being killed on your home soil. Yeah. Which brings us to our Republican candidate, presumptive presidential nominee, Donald J. Trump. Oh, yeah, here's the one where they made the article. Really bad shooting in Orlando. Police investigating possible terrorism. Many people dead and wounded. Then, horrific incident in Florida. Praying for all the victims and their families. When will this stop? When will we get tough, smart, and vigilant? Uh, appreciate the congrats on being right on radical Islamic terrorism. I don't want congrats. I want toughness and vigilance. We must be smart. Is President Obama finally going to mention the words radical Islamic terrorism? If he doesn't, he should immediately resign in disgrace. Uh, reporting that Orlando killer shouted Allahu Akbar as he slaughtered club goers. Second man in, arrested in L.A. with rifles near Gay Pride Parade. Uh, and what has happened to Orlando is just the beginning. Our leadership is weak and ineffective. I called it and asked for the ban. We must be tough. I see nothing wrong with anything he said there. Mm. And, I'm waiting uh, to see how the 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 left spins that into him hating gays and ISIS. Oh, they've or, already been doing that. Or should I say, how, how are they going to spin it into him hating Muslims and gays and liberals and anybody who they think that uh, they think that they could get not to vote for him? Uh, well, they spun it into this. Um... He's saying, oh, I, I told you so, and I was right. The thing is, he was right. It's just like uh, the Belgium attack. A couple months before the Belgium attack, he was being asked about it, and he said, Brussels used to be a beautiful city. Now there are places you can't even go because of the extremism that's taken hold there in the form of ISIS. And then the Brussels attack happened, and he was like, I called it. Although, funny story, he said that Obama should immediately resign if he doesn't mention the words radical Islamic terrorism. And he didn't? 
Obama did not mention the words. He did not say radicalize. He did not say Islam. And he, I think, only said the word terrorism once. And that was like, we're having the FBI investigate this with for a possible connection to terrorism. Um, Mr. President, I, I hate to be that guy, but... He's killing people to try to change their way of life. That's kind of like the textbook definition of terrorism. Yeah. Uh, this this was an act of terrorism, and the fact that the shooter shouted "Allahu Akbar" and um, called up nine one one and pledged himself to ISIS, and so that he supported ISIS leadership. And that ISIS is calling him an ISIS state fighter. I think we can safely move on to the fact that this was Islamic terrorism, radicalized Islamic terrorism. Now he may have just been using I, um, Islam as an excuse for him to vent his personal frustrations on homosexuality, but he is the one who put the religious attachment there, not us. Um, speaking of. There, there's one other thing that we wanted to discuss. Uh, there's one other article we have for this evening, so let's go ahead and, and get on to that. Okay. Breitbart tech editor Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> we love Milo. He is a fabulous gay man. Je suis Milo. Hashtag je suis Milo. Well, um, he was going off on people on Twitter today. Uh, with his um, statements about how, look, this is a symptom of Islam. And um, I'm not saying I agree. I'm not saying I disagree. I'm just saying this is what he was saying. Uh, but then he linked to an article he wrote back in November, which really does have bearing on this. Now, this article from November, he wrote on Breitbart.com, which is where I'm getting this. I'm a gay man, and mass Muslim immigration terrifies me. First line on this, I'd hate to be thrown off a roof. Because there are some countries where that's what they do with gays. Some Islamic countries. I mean, imagine if I landed on this face. His ego is amazing. But that's the future Europe and even the U.S. are sleepwalking into if we let wacky, progressive hand-ringers keep apologizing for radical Islam and calling the rest of us racist for expressing our concern at mass immigration from cultures that care nothing for the rights of women and gays. You really want to see a patriarchy? Fly to Riyadh or Tehran. In the former, women can't drive, although fair enough, they might be onto something there. In the latter, gays are hanged, often from cranes in public places. ISIS is even more brutal, hurling fags off the roof after ritually humiliating them. In Raqqa, you'll see women and children sold for a few hundred dollars. These are the attitudes we're importing by allowing millions of Muslims to settle in Western Europe. I'm sorry if that sounds intolerant, but remember women and gays aren't just treated like shit by ISIS, but mainstream Muslim culture too. I can't remember how many Muslim countries have the death penalty for sexuality. What is it, 10? 11? And you, if you could look that up on the magic answer box while I continue with this. Okay. We now know that at least one of Paris terrorists came in, into Europe posing as a refugee. This confirms all the worst fears of progressive commentators who were hoping the political right was wrong about the security threat mass immigration presented. But there's a more general concern for liberal Western democracies. It's not just the jihadis, but the attitudes of ordinary Muslims that are a grave cause for concern, not just for the women being gang-raped in Malmo, but homosexuals everywhere in Europe. So you can accuse me of being Islamophobic if you want, because no, I don't want to be shouted at or spit on in the street. Maybe my gayness is standing in the way of a Muslim utopia, but I'm going to be selfish here and say maybe we don't import all the people who want to murder me. I'm serious. Gay people are getting stoned to death all the time in the Middle East and not in the fun way, in the throw big rocks at your head until you die way. 
I don't mean to be callous, but what are we gaining by letting these people in? Why can't we help them with overseas aid? Why do they need to come here? Aren't we just encouraging more of them to risk the trip by throwing our borders open? And some of the things with the EU is what he's talking about for here. Because, you know, he's British. Put like that, I hope you can appreciate why I'm considering a move to the U.S. and just what you're giving up by transforming your societies and turning a blind eye to Sharia courts where a women's testimony is legally worth less than a man's. You don't hear progressives complaining about that sort of thing, of course, because somehow cry-bully Muslims occupy an even more prestigious position on the oppression league tables than women and homos. Why are left-wingers so ferociously pro-immigration from these fucking awful countries? I really don't get it. Of course, I realize there are some other options available to me. I could always take the veil. Terrorists pretend to be women by wearing it, so why can't I pretend to be one too to avoid being queer-bashed in Bradford? Plus, I wouldn't get hit on by Pakistani rape gangs because, as we all know, they prefer helpless young white girls to their own beefy women folk. I shouldn't I, laugh at that, but that was funny. When I think about it, British weather can be awfully muggy and those things really don't look very comfy. How am I supposed to cruise handsome dads in the park wearing a black bed sheet? From what I can tell, it's not women and children coming over in these refugee crises, but strong 22-year-old men. Under ordinary circumstances, I'm fine with a bit of Middle Eastern rough, but I prefer my nocturnal encounters with dark-skinned men to be at least partially consensual. <laughs> the left's willful, suicidal ignorance about Muslim culture is at odds with virtually every one of their cherished social justice prescriptions. They look for sexism and mansplaining and flirtatious remarks, yet turn a blind eye to a culture where the only acceptable role for women is head-scarfed housewife. <clears throat> they see intolerance in Halloween costumes, yet ignore the regular atrocities of cultures that mass murder each other over regional, tribal, and sectarian differences. They think conservatives who disagree with their definition of gay marriage should be bigots worthy of social ostracism, yet welcome into their midst a culture that wants to execute queers like me. If you don't believe me, just look at what's happening in Sweden. A gay pride march that planned to go through a Muslim area was criticized and called needlessly provocative by progressives who care more about protecting an immigrant's right to be a hateful bigot than the rights of gay citizens to express their sexual identity. What am I missing here? I know this is the point at which I'm supposed to say not all Muslims in the West are bad people, but I can't bring myself to care about caveats when 1,200 girls are getting raped in Rotherham and Britain is sending more fighters to ISIS than almost any other country. As the journalist and activist Brigitte Gabriel points out, the peaceful majority are irrelevant. Liberals refuse to face the fact that Muslim immigrants will never adapt to Western cultures and become typical Britons without some kind of massive re-education and assimilation. They expect us to expand our progressive worldview by accepting Islam's Bronze Age barbarism. The problem with accepting all these people and their culture is that there's no place for me in it. You get to have your ISIS friends or you get to have Milo because when you invite us to the same party, off the roof I go... Perhaps this is the left's plan all along. Banning me from campuses hasn't dented my popularity, so perhaps murder is the only way they can get rid of me. I would take it as a compliment, but even I'm not egotistical enough to want Western civilization to be destroyed on my account. And uh, although a lot of what he was talking about was um, specifically about immigrants, he's kind of right. Oh, he wrote a new article. Well, uh, to answer your question, Mo. Yes. There are 10 countries where homosexuality can be punished by death. Well, there we go. But he wrote an article today. Uh, the left chose Islam over gays. Now 100 people are dead or maimed in Orlando. Oh, wow. He's not pulling any bunches. Oh, he reflected a tweet from some woman named Sally Cohn, who is a CNN political commentator. She tweeted out, Every religion has subgroups of intolerant extremism. You can't tell me the problem is religion. The problem is intolerant extremism. Uh, 
And just when's the last time a Christian got up and decided to kill a bunch of gays? And did they kill anywhere near that? And was that being lauded as something good by the main Christian governments in the world? Obama didn't even address the uniquely homophobic character of the attack. What a good liberal. Oh, and this uh, the father of the guy who shot up the gay bar, apparently his dad hosted a political TV show and he even tried to run for the Afghan presidency. And that's, he linked an article from the Washington Post. Okay, um, I was just on Twitter scrolling through because, you know, I like to stay up with what's going on on Twitter for the, the Douche Canoe Studio account and all members of the Canoe World Order. Yep. And, and I found an image from the Daily News that may be the most fucked up thing I've seen in a long time. Oh, uh, show, put it on the, the stream if you can. Show everybody. Um. Give me just a second. Mm -hmm. um, oh, a Turkish newspaper while uh, while we're waiting on that. Turkish newspaper had a headline, 50 perverts killed in bar. The religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to remember how to share screens on this. Mm-hmm. A Dutch woman was arrested in Qatar on suspicion of adultery after she reported being raped to the police there. Of course. Child slavery, prostitution, and survival sex rages among Syrian refugees in Lebanon. There you go, Mo. Okay, hold on. Thanks, NRA. Uh... Because of your continued opposition to an assault rifle ban, terrorists like this lunatic can legally buy a killing machine and perpetrate the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. They know that I can beat a man to death with a fucking toilet seat if I want to, yes? Yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't bolster their agenda, Mo. True. Like the last time I checked, this man was not a member of the NRA. No, but the NRA wants people to be able to, you know, own AR-15s. By the way, the picture that they're showing there is an M4. I just I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, uh, that, that's something. The fucking Huffington Post did the same thing. The Huffington Post showed this picture. It's like, this is a legally available um, weapon that they can use to kill all the... Only what he used was an AR-15, which is a civilian rifle. The picture they showed was the military M4, which is a carbine. So it's a lot smaller. And... It has the um, fucking... God, what does it have? It had the selector switch option for full auto. Yeah, he did this with a semi-automatic rifle. And then it just... It irks me when they get shit incorrect like that. Because all you're doing is making the problem worse. Well, that's the thing, Mo. They're doing it on purpose. Yeah, because they want to ban guns. They, they're they going to make their agenda the most important thing out there. They don't care about 
They don't care about who's right or they don't care about who died. They just want to make their agenda. And they're going to stand on the backs of people who died to do it because, damn it, they're doing it for the right cause. Yeah, it's... Mm. Oh, uh, here I got something fun. So normally they try to justify it by going, well, we're not trying to ban hunting weapons. But let me let me try to do the screen share right here. This weapon. Can you see it? Hello? House? Oh, God, don't leave me. Oh, you're muted. Well, there, for those of you who are still with us, uh, oh, I'm probably not doing this right screen share. No, I'm not. Oh, damn it. Hold on. Let me pop back to this. Winchester lever action rifle. Uh, this is one of the hunting weapons that they are claiming that they don't want to ban. But this weapon, if you are trained on how to use it, you can use the lever really quickly, and that holds several rounds. I think, what, eight in the tube, one in the chamber? Something like that. And it reloads as easy as you see that little indention on the side? Yep. You just slide the bullets in there. That's the loading gate. Oh, by the way, that rifle is a model that was developed in the 1800s. Yeah. So it's saying that, oh, it's the fact that he had a semi-automatic rifle and 30-round magazines. While that, I agree that that made it probably a bit easier for him to kill 50 people. The AR-15 is not an inherently bad gun. It just looks scary because it's all black. And it has the handle of uh, the pistol grip. And that just terrifies people for some reason. I don't get it either. You know, I'm pretty sure if they took away the pistol grip and made the whole thing like out of wood, no one would fucking care. Well, here's the thing. They want to ban that weapon as well. And that weapon doesn't look scary at all. Oh, yeah, but there's some groups that um, try to claim, like, oh, well, we're not trying to ban that one. Like this. I'm still sharing, I know. This is an M18 bar light machine gun. Yeah. This is the bar hunting rifle used by the grandson. This is the difference between these weapons, people, as in not much. Okay? So, if you want to ban all firearms, that's ridiculous. Or if you want to ban specifically assault weapons, do you even understand, legislators, people who are angry about this, do you even understand what an assault rifle is? No. Because they intentionally make the definition of an assault rifle very vague so they can continue to ban as many weapons as they want. It's it's just fact. It just, it irks me. I think because we are the most honest people on the internet and we have that, you know, source of truth and honesty and everything. And so I'm sitting there looking at this fucking. Well, we should ban assault weapon. He walked in there with a with a with an AR-15, a fully automatic military killing weapon. Another fun story: uh, the AR-15 is a two-two-three rifle. Yeah, it's basically a souped-up twenty-two. Well, the two-two-three is the same caliber 
as the 556, which is the military round. But, haha, people don't understand that, yeah, you can put a military round into a 223. You just shouldn't. Because military weapons are beefed up to use military rounds, which have a higher grain count. Yeah, they use more propellant than civilian rounds to hit harder and do more damage. Well, here's the thing about here. Here's what I have to say about that. You you do realize that a a guy who is determined enough could have gone in there with a machete and still killed fifty people. Yeah, and just look at the UK for. Um examples of that happening i mean the uk actually has mass stabbings because they ban guns you know i don't need a weapon to commit an act of violence all you need is determination i have hands i can commit an act of violence um people can commit an act of violence with a car Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw this one thing. It was guy just drove his car through a bunch of people who were bicycling for a competition. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Killed a whole bunch of them. So, this this reaction thing, that the guns are the bad thing? No. Timothy people, McVay, Oklahoma City. You just built a bomb. People are the bad thing. Okay. People suck. Don't take the fact that people suck out on gun, on, on a tool. A gun, like an axe or a car or a plane, is a tool. And a tool cannot kill someone unless the person wielding it is attempting to kill. Or is, or sorry, as long as there's a person wielding it, honestly. Because you can accidentally kill people. Well, you know what? In this case, there were two tools there, and one of them was holding a gun. Yeah. But now that's, that's just on it. These people are piece. That guy was a piece of shit. Those guys were just trying to have fun. Oh God, I should tell you about another Twitter thing that happened to me before okay. we get out of here. So I'm on Twitter and I'm talking to people about this and I see um, somebody quotes, I think president Obama in their tweet and talks about um, those people were at that club to enhance their understanding of gay culture. And it was some bullshit fluff about how um, it was that old liberal talking point of gays being like the new noble savage. Yeah. Their own ways and are unusually knowledgeable. Well, I said also to meet strangers for anonymous gay sex, because that's what happens or anonymous sex happens at clubs, not just gay clubs. I've been to a lot of clubs in my life. I know what fucking shit happens there. Yeah. And this person read that tweet where I said also to meet people for anonymous sex and tweeted to me, it sounds like you support the shooter. Have you pledged yourself to ISIS yet? That's wow. Okay. Because these people are so blinded, are so fucking blinkered by their belief system that they refuse to admit that gay people, the the gay people who aren't horny don't go to clubs. (laughs) So yeah, sometimes there's sweaty gay sex. Sometimes there's anonymous sex. Sometimes they don't use protection and give each other STDs. That happens with everybody and you fucking freaking out because you're going, Oh, well, how dare you say that's what gays were at a club for on Latin night. It just, it irked me sitting there going, have you pledged yourself to ISIS yet? Sweet Jesus. No, but it sounds like you have call me fucking tits. All right. I, um, I'm going to say one last thing, and then we're then we're going to wrap this up. Okay. There are two ways to look at this. And in my opinion, the way we need to look at this is the second one. We can either say, oh, a, 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 a scary guy ran in there who was belligerent and, and killed a bunch of innocent people, and he used a big scary gun to do it, or... We can look at this and say, 
some massive dick ran in there. He was probably a giant dick. He killed a lot of innocent people because he was a dick. Don't let your judgment be clouded by fear. And not just fear of Muslims, fear of gays, fear of guns, fear of the unknown. Because you have to embrace logic and facts and reason. So for those of you who are pushing some kind of ideology or who are attempting to use this event to push forward your ideology, fuck yourself with a radiator pipe. But that's my opinion. You good? I am good. All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. All right, now time for some contact information. If you would like to send us an email telling us your opinion on the matter, or you just want to tell us to fuck off, or send us anonymous death threats or gay sex ads, <coughs> you can do so through our email address, douchecanoestudio at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook, both under Douche Canoe Studio, to stay up to date with all of our updates and new videos and new podcasts and stuff. Speaking of podcasts, if you'd like to download the over 100 hours of content we have completely for free, you can do so through SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play Music, all under the Douche Canoe Studio label. And make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this page for unique content not available on any of our other platforms. So, for another live stream, I'm House. I'm Mo. Try not to hate each other. And can we keep from killing the gays for like six hours?